Katia V5 quick return mechanism. This will be the case study part. So I will put the link in the video description so that you can follow along. Within Katia, I will drag and drop that step file and we're gonna see that the quick return mechanism will look like this. By default, the model will be loaded like this, so you can use fit all in in order to zoom the, uh, to zoom in the assembly. Now, before we get started, I will also add some color to the mechanism to make it easier in some cases to assemble. So I will choose the crank and I will make the whole crank in teal. I will choose the tool at the top and I will make this orange and I will make the lever green. So to get started with the mechanism within the Meo Kinematics, we need to define the fixed part. So I'll go over here for fixed part. We're going to need to define a new mechanism. I will leave the default mechanism one name. And afterwards, I will select the frame. So the frame will be the fixed component. Afterwards, starting from the bottom, we're going to add some revolve joints. So search for the revolute joint over here. And we're going to have the axis of the green lever, the axis of the pin from the frame. And I'm going to choose the two surfaces at the top. So the surface of the lever and the, and the surface of the top um, area of the frame. I'm going to click OK. Afterwards, we have another revolute joint between the teal crank and the frame. So I will go again for the revolute. I will hide that main element. And afterwards, using the hide and show, we need the axis from the frame. We need the axis from the middle of the crank. Afterwards, the top surface of that crank and the top surface of the frame. We can verify with null offset and offset that we are selecting the, um, the appropriate surface, so there are no offset required. And we can just click OK. Within our mechanism, this will be also the, um, the element that will be driven. So I will go back to Revolute 2 and I will choose this to be angle driven. And if you're going to overlap the mouse over that blue arrow, we're going to see how this mechanism will be simulated. Now, we still have this slider that needs to, to be connected to the crank. Again, with a Revolute joint. So I'm going to go for Revolute joint. I will hide the prismatic slider and we're going to see that underneath we're going to have this cylinder. I will select the axis of that cylinder, go to swap visible spaces and I will select the axis from that slider and afterwards we're going to have the interior surface of the slider which will be coincident with the top surface from the crank. So this small extruded cylinder on top of the crank. At the end, I'm going to hide and show to bring the slider back. We also need to define a prismatic joint. So this slider will slide over here in the interior. So we need to add a prismatic joint for that, which will be the second joint over here. This will be planar and this will be prismatic. I'm going to choose the interior edge of the slider. Again, with hide and show, I will send that back and we're going to choose the equivalent edge afterwards, the surface and now the interior surface over here. And as you can see, we will get a notice that um, the mechanics cannot be simulated, but we haven't fully defined everything. But usually when you receive this notice that you can simulate the mechanism, it's a good idea to see how, how the elements are currently linked together. So I'll go over here to simulation. I will choose the mechanism. And if I will move the slider all the way to 360, afterwards I will hit the insert button. And now I will start 
the simulation jump to start I will choose the step to be 0.01 and afterwards I can play this forward and we're gonna see how those three revolutes and that prismatic joint will work we can also put the loop animation like this back and forth and we can better visualize the mechanism so now we only have few joints left as we can see over here the lever and the connecting rod will need a revolut joint so i'm gonna go over here for revolut we're gonna have axis with the axis of the connecting rod and afterwards the two surfaces at the top we can verify with null offset and offset and we see that they are planar so we don't need to add any offset over there if you're gonna move a little bit forward we're gonna see that we're gonna have another revolute joint over here so revolute joint between this axis i'm gonna hide the prismatic element at the top and this will also have that axis over there and now we just need to define the planar area which will be this one as we can see there is no offset between those and at the end we can move that back again i move that with hide and show back but considering that we need to add another prismatic joint over here it's a good idea to keep it like that hidden and afterwards just define the following prismatic joint we're gonna have the top edge will be coincident with the bottom edge of this element and afterwards i'm gonna choose the bottom surface which will be coincident with this one as we can see plane one and plane two and at the end we're gonna have that information that the mechanism can be simulated again so we can go back to the simulation mechanism one and now we can define if we want our mechanism to move minus 360 afterwards hit insert we can change that looping just like before but as we can see the rotation will be like this so we can change that over here within the simulation now as we can see within demo kinematics we don't have directly let's say we have the swept volume which will give us that volumetric area where the mechanism will move but we don't have the possibility to visualize a section so as as you know you can swap between mechanical design assembly design and digital mock-up demo kinematics so we can go back to assembly design over here at the bottom we're going to have the sectioning and we can make use of the volumetric cut which is this one volume cut afterwards we're going to see that for the position this is set to x and we can go for example to y or for z but in this case i will go with with the y axis and afterwards if i will click ok and i will maximize this we're going to see that within the application we're going to have the mechanism that we defined previously but we're also going to have the section so now i have the possibility to jump back to demo kinematics and i can simulate that mechanism again so i will go positive 360 afterwards i will make this mechanism move as we can see that section play will take um, action so that slider as soon as it will reach over here it will be sectioned and no longer visible if you want to activate that section you can just go over here select the section and you can deactivate it because currently it's activated and we're gonna go back over here and we also have the section field which is that sketch we can also control and um, have that hidden or not okay so if you want to learn more regarding demo kinematics or assembly i will position a similar video over here to the left and i will also position a subscribe button to the right thanks for watching